Yes. So during this lecture, we were discussing the possible relevance of uh, recanalization in cerebral venous thrombosis. So we know that recanalization is important in arterial stroke, but actually that is not so clear in uh, venous stroke. Uh, we know that we have uh, the current standard treatment in cerebral venous thrombosis, which is anticoagulation, and that improves outcomes. But indeed, there are still some patients uh, that uh, have severe disability in the long term. These are usually young patients, mostly women, and, and some patients die both in the acute phase and in and, and the long term. So there is an net need for better treatments in cerebral venous thrombosis. Uh, also, we know that from the pathophysiological point of view, it makes sense that venous recanalization is important. We know that there is evidence from basic mo basic science models, animal models, and also from patients that uh, increased venous pressure is associated with more uh, probability of having brain lesion and more severe brain lesion according uh, to, the, to the increased venous pressure. So it, it does make sense that reducing uh, venous pressure by producing early recanalization may be relevant. Also, in uh, it was published in 2020, we had a single trial assessing the role of uh, uh, therapeutic venous recanalization, so endovascular treatment in cerebral venous thrombosis on top of the standard treatment. This was the TUAC trial. It was published in 2020. And uh, this trial was neutral and it was stopped prematurely for fertility. So at this point, although there was uh, indeed uh, some rationale to believe that venous recanalization was relevant, there was some doubt about the, the relevance of, of this outcome since the trial was neutral and there was no specific evidence on, on the role of venous recanalization. So we have uh, been interested in this topic for, for the last years. We started by doing a systematic review on venous recanalization in patients treated with anticoagulation. Indeed, most patients achieve venous recanalization during follow-up, but we understood in this systematic review that there was absolutely no evidence on early time points uh, after uh, starting treatment, which will be probably the crucial time window for venous recanalization to happen and to have a critical uh, uh, impact on, on the outcomes. Still, we could see in the systematic review that there was an association between having a more favorable outcome according to the ranking scale and the, and the follow-up and achieving venous recanalization. However, there was still at the time no good evidence on uh, the association with recurrence of cerebral venous thrombosis and headache. So uh, we started by that time a, a study, a prospective study with a very standardized uh, MR assessments at several time points, including early time points, to assess the role of venous recanalization in patients treated with anticoagulation to see how often it happened and also if it was associated with some blood biomarkers that uh, could be a marker of uh, disruption of the blood-brain barrier and other markers of of brain damage and also with the evolution of the brain lesions in the MRI. So the evolution of, of the brain damage as well on, on imaging. And in that study, actually, it was surprising to find that most patients, actually about three quarters, already have partial, at least partial recanalization, uh, even after treatment, only with anticoagulation after eight days. And in these patients, indeed, uh, they were much more likely to have recovery of the non-hemorrhagic brain lesions. And also that patients that have persistent venous occlusion were much more likely to have new brain lesions, non-hemorrhagic brain lesions by day eight uh, after the assessment. Also, we found that these patients had an increase levels of MMP9, which is a marker of blood-brain barrier disruption in patients with brain damage, with uh, lesions on the imaging assessment, and that there was a correlation between uh, the, the evolution of the MMP9 uh, marker and the venous recanalization status. So patients that achieved venous recanalization by day eight, they have a fast decline of the levels of MMP9, suggesting that the process is evolving in a favorable way. And patients with persistent venous occlusion had persistent high levels of MMP9 uh, by day eight. And this difference was significantly different between the two groups. So again, there, this suggests that the, there is a possible role for the evolution of brain damage in patients with cerebral venous thrombosis. And also uh, we had an update of our first systematic review recently. Now 
uh, including this data we collected in the perspective study and other studies uh, published since 2017. And uh, indeed now there is enough evidence, of course, just using meta-analysis, different methodologies and so on, several limitations, but there is uh, evidence suggesting that uh, it is also associated with recurrence. So patients achieving recanalization have less recurrent CBT and also with headache, have they are less likely to have a headache in the follow-up. So, uh, of course, we need more evidence. We uh, especially need markers that allow us to uh, understand better which patients may benefit from more invasive treatments to promote venous recanalization. Uh, so we, we assessed that in the TWAC trial, but indeed it was a very pragmatic trial. Uh, several patients selected for, for the treatment. So uh, we do need probably better markers to select these patients for the treatment. And for that, we need uh, more collaborative studies and better evidence on what could be the predictors uh, for better outcome with more invasive treatments in this, in this less common form of stroke. 